gather around to hear the good word from the right Reverend Larkin Rose. I've learned the hard way that a lot of people really cannot grasp satire and sarcasm. So I'm going to start with a disclaimer here. Um, when I was getting ready to do what I'm about to do, I had two main concerns. The first was that I thought some people might be truly offended who really don't need to be, who really shouldn't be. My second concern was that some people wouldn't be offended when they totally should be. We read now from the Gospel according to government. First book of politicians, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning there was chaos and mayhem, and people were as wild beasts, and there was great wailing and gnashing of teeth throughout the land. Then it came to pass that politicians came down out of heaven, shining in glory, and spoke unto the people, saying, we are the Lord thy government, and we have decided to bless you with our presence, so that we may save you from your sins. Obey our commandments, pay tribute unto us, and salvation shall be yours. For without us, you are but stupid, violent animals, and only through our benevolent domination of you shall ye be transformed into a civilized and prosperous people. And the people wondered at the words of the politicians and were sorely afraid. But the politicians said unto them, Fear not, if you will only blindly obey the God called government and mindlessly comply with our every whim, then you shall be blessed. But any who disobey our commands, the heathens and criminals who think for themselves, being evil in our sight, shall be cast into prison and banished from the collectivist authoritarian paradise we shall create. So cast aside your individual judgment, your free will, your conscience and your moral codes, and follow us, the high priests of government, without thought or question. The foolish man builds his house upon consensus, cooperation and voluntary interaction. But the wise man builds his house upon political promises, state coercion, and the lust for power. Free will, self-determination, and peaceful coexistence are the devil's work and lead only to fire and brimstone, suffering and torment. But blind obedience, unthinking loyalty, and unwavering subservience are the path to salvation. You have heard that it hath been said, Love your neighbor and do unto others as you would have do done unto you. But we, the politicians, say unto you, Pray for the incarceration or extermination of those who are not like you. But pray also for your neighbors to be taxed and regulated. Pray for your friends to be controlled and enslaved. Devote your heart and soul to the rituals of politics so that we, the high priests of government, may dominate all of mankind for its own good. Only then shall you have everlasting peace. We are the Lord thy government, and here are our commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before government. Thou shalt follow no moral codes and no value systems above the arbitrary whims of the politicians. Thou shalt not take the name of government in vain or speak against us, the high priests of state. For those who do are sinners, criminals, and terrorists in our eyes and shall be wiped from the face of the earth. Remember election day to keep it holy. Judge not the politicians or their mercenaries, lest ye be put on the no-fly list. Honor thy congressman and thy senator, that their reign may be long upon the land which the Lord thy government has taken from thee. Thou shalt murder by voting for those who engage in perpetual warmongering. Thou shalt kill whenever government commands it. And the killing shall be called national defense, 
serving one's country, and spreading democracy. No greater love hath a man than this, that a man will go halfway around the world to murder complete strangers because we told him to. Thou shalt steal by voting for your neighbors to be taxed, and thou shalt hate and persecute any who resist. Thou shalt covet thy neighbor's income and his car and his house and everything that is thy neighbor's. Thou shalt beg the Lord thy government to take these things from thy neighbor and give them unto thee. Verily we say unto you, it is greedy and selfish to keep what you have earned, but noble and virtuous, virtuous to ask us to forcibly take what your neighbor has earned. Thou shalt bear false witness by calling thieves and robbers public servants, by calling usurpers and tyrants leaders and representatives, and by calling those who advocate liberty for all criminals and terrorists. Blessed are the blindly obedient, for the politicians shall reward them. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after power, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the voters, for they shall legitimize tyranny and oppression. Blessed are the bankers, for they shall embezzle the earth. Blessed are the jackbooted thugs, for they shall get away with murder. Blessed are the corrupt in heart, for they shall receive power. Blessed are the warmongers, for they shall imagine themselves to be gods. Blessed are they who have persecuted the innocent for the politician's sake, for they shall be promoted. And cursed are the heathens and extremists who speak out against our tyranny, who encourage you to question authority, and who instruct you to disobey immoral commands. We, the politicians, say unto you, worship those who insult and exploit you. Bow to those who extort and oppress you, and vote for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Here ends our reading from the first book of Politicians, from the Gospel According to Government. I'm very happy to be able to preach to this congregation because I sense that many of you need help because I believe you are losing faith in the God called government. Now, at times, our wise and benevolent political masters, they test our faith to make sure we are true believers by doing things which to us may seem insane and immoral. But it is not our place to question. If we are good and pure, we will gladly pay and obey. If we don't like the wars, if we think there's something wrong with them taking our money and giving it to giant banks or running Ponzi schemes or fabricating crime, it is a testament to our faith that we will blindly, unthinkingly go along with this oppression to show our loyalty to the state. It is a sin to question the wisdom of our betters, the politicians. I think God has something to say about this. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> the righteous among us will tolerate every indignity and humiliation and insult to show our faith in the state. And only heretics would ever suggest that the politicians that are in Washington are not our rightful lords and masters. Do not listen to such blasphemy. In fact, report it to the authorities whenever you hear it. Ask not what you can do to improve society. Ask how you can empower and enrich the parasitic ruling class so that they can create a totalitarian utopia for all of us.
I hope these words will be of value to you. I hope you will apply these lessons to your life. So the next time a, a cop or a tax collector or a bureaucrat decide to butt into your life or boss you around or rob you or assault you or tase you, I hope you can find the strength to pathetically grovel and submit without question and blindly obey their every whim and cooperate with whatever injustice and hardship they wish to inflict upon you or anyone else because that is the mark of a virtuous, noble citizen and that is the path to salvation. Look how well it worked for the Russians and the Germans and the Chinese and the subjects of every other tyrannical regime in history. May we too find peace through warmongering, freedom through subservience, justice through violent aggression, and prosperity through universal enslavement. Here end our lessons. Blessed are those who blindly follow orders and do not think for themselves. Amen. Okay, I'm back. I regained my sanity. Now, what's really sad is what I just delivered is basically the message that we all got, with a few exceptions, we all got from our teachers, from our parents, from the media, and from the government. Now, it wasn't quite that direct or honest, but that is the underlying message, that obedience to the state is a virtue. What's even more sad is government is the religion that people really believe in. Of all the people who label themselves Christian, Jewish, Muslim, atheist, agnostic, whatever, the real religion of the vast majority of people in this country and the world is the worship of government. It's the God they bow to, it's the God they pray for blessings, and it's the God they obey. Where they go on Sunday morning is just window dressing. I want to give a few closing words as this pork fest winds down. To me, the beauty of pork fest is not that we're all the same, because we're not. It's not that we all care about the same things, because we don't. It's not that we all agree on everything, because we don't. We just have one thing in common, and that's that we believe in freedom. You know, the media and people out there, they like to talk about diversity. I've never seen any crowd anywhere with the diversity of Porkfest. We have rich and poor and everything in between, and Christians, Jews, Muslims, atheists, agnostics, some religions I haven't even heard of before. Men and women, old and young, all sorts of races. Um, we have gun toters and pacifists, gay and straight, a whole bunch of different personalities, different interests, different priorities, different beliefs. And we do disagree on a lot of things, which is why we like to stand around discussing, even arguing. But we get along. What you don't see here is you don't see us robbing each other. You don't see us assaulting each other or attacking each other or threatening each other. You also don't see cops. Now you may see a couple and not know it because apparently they think peaceful coexistence is such a horrible thing that they need to infiltrate it. Other than that, you don't see cops or authority or government. But we get along. So the last thing I want to say is a message, not to the people here, but to everyone else on the planet, the rest of the world, knowing that hopefully this will make it to YouTube. Everyone else, you say you want world peace. You say you want freedom and justice and equality and security. You say you want peaceful coexistence. Well, guess what? We have all of that right here at Porkfest. So to the rest of the world, you say you want all those things, and I want you to have all those things. 
I want the whole world to be pork fest. And it doesn't mean we all agree. It doesn't mean we see eye to eye on everything. We don't. We already don't and we never will. That's just fine. We get along. To the rest of the world, if you really want those things, if you really want world peace, justice, freedom, you can have it. But I'll tell you the price. I'll tell you what it's going to cost you if you really want that. Give up the cult of statism and embrace humanity. Thank you.